Finance Minister Mutulin Ngube has just released his very first budget. There were a lot of expectations. Did he deliver? Did he disappoint? Let's take a look. In this episode, we just want to look at what Mutuli tried to do in this budget and how he's trying to do it. There are three main things he tried to do here. One, stop borrowing too much. Two, stop spending too much. And three, raise more money. So let's go through these things really quickly, one by one. Number one, stop borrowing. Well, here's the problem. The government has been borrowing too much money. We have too much debt. At the end of September, domestic debt stood at 9.6 billion. Domestic debt is basically the amount of money that the government owes people here in Zimbabwe. A lot of this domestic debt is made up of treasury bills. We've talked about this a lot on the show before. When you have a treasury bill, you are basically lending money to the government. The problem is, the government issued too many of these. It's been basically printing money. So we all know what happens when you print money. Inflation. That's what has happened. So Mtuli has tried to change this. Government will stop issuing treasury bills every time it needs money. There's another way in which government was borrowing too much. The overdraft. You see, the government's bank is the RBZ. Government has an overdraft there. Just like you and I, we have an overdraft at our bank. But the, every overdraft has a limit. The government was not supposed to get more than 20% of the money it raised in the previous year. But the government kept going above this limit. Imagine, you have a bank manager that keeps lending you money, even if you never pay back. Don't we all want a manager as generous as the RBZ? You just pick up the phone and call the manager and he gives you more money. The overdraft limit was 20%. Mutuli now says the limit must come down to 5%. And they'll stop going over the limit. We hope that happens. Now that's number one, the borrowing part. Now to number two, the spending. Mutuli said he's cutting salaries of senior officials by 5%. We're talking everyone from ministers, perm sex, parastatal bosses, even the president. This is great. Just a few issues. First, we just don't know how much we're saving here. Why? Because we don't know how much these guys actually make. Mutuli should have given us figures. Tell us how much exactly are we saving here. Second, it's great to cut the salaries, but it's even better to deal with the allowances and perks. That's where the big money is. Mutuli is also cutting back on a lot of money wasting. He has thousands of ghost workers on the payroll. 20 million. That's how much is going to ghost workers every year. That's according to the Auditor General. That's a lot of money to be spending on ghosts. So what will Mutuli do? He's going to vet all civil servants. He's going to use biometric data like fingerprints. Civil servants will need to show their qualifications. They must also show their letters of appointments. He wants to know whether you're a real person or a ghost. How many ghost workers will come out? Mutuli is like a profiteer, laying hands on the civil service and telling demons to come out. It's an exorcism. This is going to be very interesting. He's also cutting back on cars. The finance minister said he's also reducing the number of embassies. We have 46 embassies and consulates. We spend 65 million US dollars on them every year. We're now cutting them from number 46 to 38. Still, not enough. Do we need all those embassies? Well, here's another thing that Mutuli is trying to cut costs on. No more jaw rides for civil servants and government cars. How many times have you seen government cars at a bottle store on a Saturday night? Or a government car carrying firewood on Sunday? They can't do that anymore. They have to park their cars when it's not office hours. Will they listen? This will also be interesting. Mutuli is also cutting out a lot of subsidies. This even includes doing away with command agriculture. Yes, he's proposing that we do away with command agric. We spent over a billion bucks, he said, this year on command. He wants to replace it with another system. Will politicians allow him? We wait and see. That's some of the stuff that he's doing to cut back on spending. Now let's take a look at how he's trying to raise revenue. Lake Chivero. Hyundai Parks. Remember we have one big problem, the budget deficit. We're spending more than we are making. So the finance minister is trying to close that gap. And this is where it hurts many of us the most. Taxes, taxes, and more taxes. For every litre of fuel you buy, there are a lot of taxes included. These taxes are already high. Mube has made it even harder for you and me. He has increased one of those taxes, excise duty. It has gone up by 7 cents on diesel and 6.5 cents on petrol. Now we all know what this means. Fuel prices are going up and we all know what that means. The prices of everything else will go up. It's not going to be a very Merry Christmas for a lot of us. And if you run a shop and you take US dollars, you're supposed to pay your taxes in US dollars too. If you want to buy a car from outside the country, now you have to pay your duty in US dollars. Same thing as if you're importing wine or cheese or even handbags and makeup. Slay Queen's on loving Mutuli right now. A lot of people aren't too happy either. But why is he doing this? Well, he's trying to bring back US dollars back into the formal system. At the same time, he's trying to restrict imports. This is basically like putting up tariffs to limit imports. In a way, he's trying to drag us back into full dollarization slowly and slowly. It's going to hurt. 
So this is the stuff that Matuli is doing in his budget. Stop borrowing too much, stop spending too much, and raise more money. Was it a good budget? Will it work? Well, these are the questions that we're asking. The better question is this. Will he stick to his proposals? That has always been the issue. Will the government do what it says it would do? He's preaching austerity. This is what we need. But it's just austerity for ordinary folks. Is there austerity in government? Are there enough spending cuts at the top? Will the government cut back on foreign travel? Will ministers cut back on their allowances? Will our MP stop demanding cars? Do we even need a new parliament? These are the questions. Look, ordinary folks are already taking austerity measures. They're already tightening their belts. It's already hard for them, for us. But while ordinary people are paying US dollars for duty, the finance minister is telling us that senior civil servants won't pay any duty for cars at all. Is this fair? Why not lead by example? If we're all doing this austerity thing, we all have to make sacrifices. It can't be small guys always picking up the bills. So long and short, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. A lot of people in business are saying the budget isn't too bad. It's a decent start. But to make it work, everyone must share the sacrifice.